do have a uh, heavy to extreme cell at your 1 to 2 o'clock. The reports the pilot of the plane may have been doing aerial acrobatics just before... By no stretch of the imagination are we healed, and we may never be healed. It's just after 10 a.m. on December 20th, 2011. Morning rush hour is over in the New York metropolitan area, but there's still plenty of traffic on Interstate 287 near Morristown, New Jersey, when a strange sight appears in the gray overcast sky. Drivers who happen to look up are stunned to see an aircraft spiraling toward the ground in a near vertical dive, trailing smoke. Within seconds, the doomed aircraft plunges into the southbound lanes and wooded median of I-287. Several motorists have no choice but to drive through the fireball. Miraculously, none of them are injured. Their narrow escape is the one bright spot in an otherwise grim situation. All five people aboard the aircraft, two of them young children, are dead. A multi-million dollar airplane is destroyed. A major highway is closed for hours and countless lives are disrupted as a result. Why did it happen? To answer that question, we have to turn back the clock to 9 a.m. as the pilot of November 731 Charlie Alpha, a Cicada TBM 700, is preparing for a flight from Teterboro, New Jersey to Atlanta's Peachtree DeKalb Airport. He's joined by his wife, two children, a business associate, and the family dog. The 45-year-old pilot holds a private certificate and instrument rating and has logged over 1,400 hours in 10 years of flying. His total experience in the TBM is unknown, but evidence suggests it may be as much as 700 hours. He takes annual recurrent training in the aircraft and has successfully completed a simulator course in the past month. The flight plan for the trip, filed via DUOTS at 7 o'clock that morning, lists an en route cruise speed of 292 knots at flight level 260. There's no indication that the pilot has received an official weather briefing from DUOTS or Flight Service, though it seems likely he's gotten weather information from other unofficial sources. It's 9.30 a.m. when ATC issues an IFR clearance for departure to the southwest. Eight minutes later, the aircraft is cleared for takeoff. At the time of the accident, the most prominent weather feature in the area was a cold front that had moved south across the region earlier that morning. Behind it lay a band of moisture that in combination with freezing temperatures aloft created the potential for dangerous icing conditions. The area forecast valid at the time of the accident called for overcast ceilings at 7,000 feet with tops through flight level 180. In addition, an airmet had been issued advising pilots of moderate icing from the freezing level, which varied between 3,000 and 9,000 feet, to flight level 180 over an area covering most of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Maryland. More worrisome than that rather vague warning, however, were the numerous pilot reports of icing. Just after 8 a.m., an American Airlines MD-83 over Morristown, the site of the accident, made an urgent report of severe rime icing between 14,000 and 16,500 feet. The pilot later stated that conditions were the worst he'd encountered in 38 years of flying. Likewise, the captain of a Canadair regional jet operating near 731 Charlie Alpha at the time of the accident later reported that the rate of accumulation overwhelmed his wing anti-ice system. He estimated that the aircraft picked up two and a half inches of ice on the protected areas of the wing and four inches on some unprotected areas within just a few minutes. That particular report was, of course, not available to the pilot of 731 Charlie Alpha. However, there was no shortage of other PIREPs earlier that morning, several of them from large jet aircraft reporting moderate icing. According to the AIM, icing reaches the moderate level when, quote, the rate of accumulation is such that even short encounters become potentially hazardous. In contrast to the dangers lurking above, weather at the departure airport was quite good, with excellent visibility and a high overcast. And despite all the pilot reports prior to the accident, the weather forecasting system generated no additional warnings apart from a minor update to the existing airmet. 
We can't be sure how much the pilot really knew about the weather situation that morning. All we can say is, whatever concerns he may have had, they certainly didn't keep him from departing. It's now 9.55 a.m. and 731 Charlie Alpha is southwest bound, climbing through 8,000 feet on its way to 10,000 when it's handed off to a new controller at New York Tracon. Departure TBM 731, Charlie Alpha, 8 for 10,000. 731 Charlie Alpha, New York Departure, maintain 1414,000. 1414, 1 Charlie Alpha. And 1 Charlie Alpha, uh, reports of moderate rhyme 15 through 17. Um, light rhyme says it wasn't a problem at 14. I'll keep you out there. If it gets worse, let me know. And when the center takes your hand off, I'll climb it and they can get you higher. Well, Charlie Alpha, uh, we'll let you know what happens when we get in there. And, uh, yeah, if we can go straight through it, that's no problem for us. Unbeknownst to the pilot, due to the numerous icing reports, officials at New York Center have determined that propeller aircraft filed at 16,000 feet and below should either be rerouted or held at lower altitude until clear of the icing. Presumably, because its filed altitude is flight level 260, 731 Charlie Alpha is not affected by this policy. Three minutes later, while climbing through 12,800 feet, it's cleared into the heart of the icing. One Charlie Alpha climbing to 17,000, New York Center 134.6. Going to 346 on the way up to 117,000. One Charlie Alpha, we're just entering the DMC, right? or the IMC right now. The TBM-700 is a high-performance aircraft. Its 700-horsepower turbine engine allows it to cruise at nearly 300 knots and up to 30,000 feet. It's a capable weather-flying machine, but like any aircraft, it has limitations. Aircraft of this caliber pass through ice all the time, but they rarely linger in it for the simple reason that their surface ceilings and climb performance make it easy to avoid. Known icing systems offer breathing room and light and moderate icing, but severe ice is an entirely different story. The TBM's operating handbook clearly states that the first step upon encountering severe icing should be to request priority handling from ATC. The reason being that unless a pilot makes a quick getaway, the D ice boots will be overwhelmed by the rate of accumulation. As ice builds, drag increases rapidly and airspeed falls off. To maintain a climb in this situation, the pilot has to keep increasing the angle of attack, adding to the drag and eventually exposing unprotected parts of the wing to ice. Things can get very bad very quickly. The autopilot poses other dangers. There's no evidence that 731 Charlie Alpha was on autopilot during the accident sequence, but it's worth noting that, when ordered to maintain a certain rate of climb, an autopilot will simply keep pulling back as the aircraft loads up with ice. By the time it abruptly disconnects, or the pilot finally realizes the danger, it may already be too late. By 10.01 a.m., a little over three minutes after its pilot reported entering IMC, the TBM is at 16,800 feet and picking up ice. Our 731 Charlie Off, I will have hired for you as soon as I can. You will get some uh, light icing there at 17,000. One Charlie Off, we can confirm that light icing for you. It's light to, uh, yeah, it's pretty light for now. We've been in here for, for uh, a little while and uh, higher when able would be great. Only nine seconds later, however, the situation aboard 731 Charlie Alpha has clearly taken a turn for the worse. 731 Charlie Alpha, we're getting a little rattle here. Can we uh, get uh, uh, higher as soon as possible, please? Yes, yeah, stand by. Fifteen seconds later, the controller has coordinated a climb. Our 731 Charlie Alpha climb and maintain flight level 200. 200 for one Charlie Alpha, thank you. It's not entirely clear what the pilot's reference to getting a little rattle, or possibly rattled, means. A post-accident statement from the controller indicates he believes the pilot is simply worried about the icing. But it's also possible the pilot is referring to a noise in the aircraft, conceivably sounds made by the engine ingesting ice. 
Accident investigators will later find the switch for the inertial separator, a mechanical device that prevents ice from entering the engine, in the off position. Whatever the case, the pilot begins his climb. Just over a minute later, as the aircraft reaches an altitude of 17,800 feet, it suddenly turns 70 degrees to the left and enters a descent. 20 seconds later, a truncated call is heard on the frequency. And 731 is declaring. In the 48 seconds before the final ATC radar return, the aircraft falls 15,400 feet. At some point, aerodynamic loads overstress the airframe and cause the right wing and parts of the tail to separate. On the ground at New York Center, the realization that something terrible has happened begins to set in. 731 Charlie Alpha, New York. Hey, you see that code 1031? I think he's having trouble with the icing. Oh, is it the 731 Charlie? Right now. <laughs> What's he at right now? I don't know. I think he's descending. Oh, he's just doing it on his own? Uh, I think he doesn't oh, yes. want to be. 731 Charlie Alpha, you there? The crash of November 731 Charlie Alpha is a sobering example of just how quickly things can go wrong in certain weather situations, even for an experienced, well-trained pilot flying a capable aircraft. In hindsight, the immediate temptation is to speculate that an official weather briefing would have left the pilot better prepared for the conditions he eventually faced, and perhaps it would have. But large icing air mitts are a dime a dozen during winter in the Northeast. And it's not hard to imagine the experienced pilot of a turbine aircraft glancing through a list of PIREPs, reaching the conclusion that he'd probably pick up a little ice during the climb and moving on, just as he had dozens of times before. It's also possible that more proactive warnings from ATC, or better integration of pilot reports into the forecasting system, might have made a difference. That said, as pilots, we fly the weather we find, not what was forecast and it's incumbent upon us to take the initiative with ATC, even, or perhaps especially, in high-density airspace. Sometimes experience harms more than it helps. Rather than making us more vigilant, it can lead to a sort of comfortable complacency, not only about the dangers we face, but about our own capabilities and those of our aircraft. Complacency is arguably aviation's most common vice. And one of the hard truths about flying is that it's sometimes punished with extraordinary severity. The pilot of 731 Charlie Alpha was in the clouds for a total of approximately five minutes. Roughly two minutes passed between his first indication to ATC that icing was a problem and the beginning of the final plunge. It takes time for the human mind to spin up when suddenly confronted with a problem it takes time to recognize that things have changed and process the idea that an extraordinary response is called for. All during that time, part of the mind is fighting against the new reality, arguing, stay the course. Two minutes isn't much time, but it's enough time. Enough time to make a decision, declare an emergency, and reverse the climb. Or just push the nose over and worry about ATC later. Or at least that's what we'd like to think. The truth of the matter, which is that two minutes really isn't much time for someone who's surprised, conflicted, and almost certainly frightened, is decidedly less comforting. 